Hello everyone, my name is Griff, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Storm Raven for the Grey Knights. Now, the Storm Raven has armor 12 all around. It is a flyer, which can hover. However, if you hover, then it is treated as a fast skimmer, limiting how many weapons it can fire, and also meaning that anything can shoot at it with its full ballista skill and not overwatch. Or Snapfire. Overwatch, Snapfire, they're basically the same thing. So, it also has the Sermantite plating, meaning that multiple weapons don't get the additional D6 for armor penetration against a Storm Raven. It has a carrying capacity of 12 models and or one Dreadnought. It also has the power of the Machine Spirit. So let's take a look at how I would use the Storm Raven. I would use it as a multi-purpose vehicle that can either kill anything outright or severely damage it. You have the option for keeping its twin link assault cannon or replacing it for a twin link glass cannon or a twin linked plasma cannon for free. For its other weapon, it has a twin linked heavy bolter, which you can swap out for a twin link multi melter for free or a typhoon missile launcher for 25 points i would honestly just swap out the twin linked heavy bolter for the twin linked multi melter as i'm going to explain why now when the storm raven comes in i would immediately figure out which prime target do i need to have killed is there a specific vehicle on the table that I don't want to have hang around? Is there a flyer? If there are any of those things, I would take the Storm Raven, get as close to it as I can, and destroy it with the Twin Link Multi Melta. The chances of that happening are pretty good, since it is Strength 8, AP 1, and most flyers are. 10 armor, with the exception of the Heldrake. And then with the other weapon, be it the Twin Link, Assault Cannon, Laz Cannon, Plasma Cannon, I would honestly just go with the Twin Link Plasma Cannon, as it is incredibly good at taking out infantry and heavy infantry. So what you have is a flyer that is able to shoot at two different things in one turn. You can add Hurricane Bolters to each side of the Storm Raven for 30 points each. That's 30 more points like you're adding on to a 205 point vehicle, so it is completely up to you whether you want to do that or not. And you can also give it Cybolt Ammunition for 20 points. Really, I would only take the Cybolt Ammunition if I have the Twin Link Assault Cannon meaning that the Twin Linked Assault Cannon will become Strength 7 and the Hurricane Bolters would become Strength 5. If I don't have the Twin Linked Assault Cannon, I would skip out on the Cybold Ammunition because the Plasma Cannon is good enough for taking out any form of infantry and possibly any light vehicles. Now, when it comes to transporting units, here's where you have to think, do I want my Storm Raven to transport any of my units? And if so, why? The one thing to keep in mind is that if you wish to assault out of the Storm Raven, the Storm Raven needs to be in hover mode. There is a way for the Storm Raven to disembark its passengers while it is flying around but it is dangerous and it follows the rules for deep strike meaning that when you jump out of the storm raven you won't be able to assault on the turn that you do so unless it is in hover mode now if you decide to put the thing in hover mode it becomes a fast skimmer so will benefit for having jink 
but then you also have to take into account Jink won't always save the Storm Raven, and its best chance is just to fly around having everything hit with snapshots. And having a hard time piercing that armor 12. So, the one idea I had with the Storm Raven is to make it able to kill two things in one turn, carrying an assortment of units inside of the Storm Raven. The one thing you can do if you don't wish to use it as an assault vehicle, is to have it carrying around a tech marine in case something does damage to the storm raven, knocking out a hull point or knocking out a weapon or immobilizing it, thus putting it in vector what's it called where it can't stop and it has to keep going around in a circle. But the other thing that I would do is I would put a unit in there accompanied by a Dreadnought, with a Dreadnought being armed with Psy Flame ammunition and the Heavy Flamer on the one arm and then the other arm being a Twin Linked Heavy Flamer. So you have this Dreadnought just flinging around Strength 6 Heavy Flamers that are going to go right through cover. If you're fighting against Tau or Eldar, they're just going to burn to a crisp like nothing. Now, how would I use this for an assault? You use the Dreadnought to assault first. So then all the Overwatch shots go on the Dreadnought, which is armor 12. You would have to have some serious firepower to be able to hurt him. But if you're going up against small arms fire, bolter fire, it can't hurt the dreadnought. So you have the dreadnought initiate the salt, and then whatever you have in your storm raven, be it terminators, paladins, purifiers, regular gray knights, they can join in the assault unmolested by Overwatch. One other thing I forgot to mention about the Storm Raven is that it has a psychic pilot, which means that it has the psychic power fortitude, which you pass on leadership 10, and if you pass it, then any crew stunned or crew shaken results like you suffered earlier are ignored during that phase. So, as I was finishing up this video, I completely forgot about one major thing with the Storm Raven is that it has Mind Strike missiles. Now, back in 5th edition, these weren't all that relevant because how they work is that any Psyker hit by a Mind Strike missile suffers the perils of the warp in addition to any other effects. So, meaning that before you would wound, the Psyker hit by the thing suffers Perils of the Warp immediately. Now, back in 5th edition, you were still able to get an invulnerable save against this thing, be it that you had to reroll any successful invulnerable saves. But now, in 6th edition, they don't get any saves whatsoever. So, let's say that you use this thing to shoot at a squad of Eldar Guardians or Eldar Jet Bikes that happen to have a Warlock with them. All you have to do is just hit the Warlock and the Warlock is dead. You don't even need to roll the wound or anything. He is just flat out dead because of Perils of the Warp. That is... Looking back at this now, I have to say that this is an amazing weapon. Granted, it's a one-shot weapon, the Storm Raven has four of them, but if you're up against Eldar, oh my god, just, oh my god, goodbye conceal. Suck it, Eldar! Anyways, thank you for watching this video, I hope you really like it. There will be more videos to come, and I will see you later.